In this video, we're going to look at the mechanism of action of NSAIDs and acetaminophen as analgesics. In order to understand how these work, we have to first understand how pain is perceived. And pain perception works through nociceptors that are going to live in the periphery and are going to pick up when we have things like inflammation, a pain response, we've had damage to tissues, um, anything that is essentially going to create the pain response. How these nociceptors work is they're going to send a nerve impulse in through the dorsal homework of the spinal column. They will synapse on somatosensory nerves so it will then send the impulse through the spinal column to the brain and then finally uh, are going to transmit that signal to the brain uh, and to the areas of the brain that are going to perceive pain. So it comes from the periphery, moves through the spinal co column, and is going to go up towards the brain to perceive pain. Now, that being said, there are some other functions that work to manage the system. So even though we're having a pain response, the body needs to perform its functions. So we actually have descending pathways that are going to come down from the brain that are going to have an inhibitory function. So they are actually going to work to inhibit the pain response um, so that we can continue to have the function that we need so we can continue on with any of the kind of vital activities that we need to do to continue to stay alive. So this is called the descending inhibitory pathway. And then we have our somatosensory pathways that are going to provide uh, the sensation of pain. So this is the ascending uh, sensory pathway. Now the way that an analgesic like NSAID or acetaminophen is going to target pain is at the location or the peripheral location of the pain response itself. When we have damage to the cell membrane, so uh, this will be our kind of phospholipid layer of the cell membrane, and there is any damage or something that has caused an insult to this, so anything that's insulted the cell membrane, what's going to happen is that insult will result in the release of phospholipase A2. The release of the phospholipase is going to lead to the activation or the release of arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid will uh, bind to our... Uh, arachidonic acid will bind to COX-1 or 2 to cause the release of PGG2. PGG2 is converted through what's called the POX pathway into PGH2. And PGH2 is going to result in the release of prostanoids, which are going to be painful causing substances. This includes things like prostaglandins, prostacyclin, thromboxin, PGE, that are all going to stimulate the pain response. So it's these prostanoids which are going to actually activate the nociceptors and going to stimulate the pain response. So when we're giving something like an NSAID, the NSAID works to block the COX-2 pathway. So NSAIDs act here to block the COX-2 pathway, which will reduce the ability to flow through this flowchart, create the prostanoids, and stimulate the nociceptors. Receptors, so we'll see a reduction in pain. Alternatively, when we're looking at something like acetaminophen, acetaminophen is going to act on the POX pathway. So acetaminophen interferes here and is going to prevent, again, further progression through uh, the pathway to create uh, prostanoids. So the end result of either medication is the inhibition of this inflammatory pathway, which is going to lead to the reduction of prostanoid creation, which is going to lead to decreased nociceptor stimulation. What's interesting about NSAIDs is NSAIDs typically will also activate the descending inhibitory pathway. So something unique to NSAIDs is that we typically see an NSAID activating this pathway. This is not a well-known mechanism, but we start to see activation of the descending inhibitory pathway, which is going to also limit the pain response. So if we're activating the descending inhibitory pathway, we're reducing the ability of the somatosensory system to promote that pain to the cortical and subcortical regions of the brain. So when we look at NSAIDs, NSAIDs are targeting the COX-1 and 2 pathway pathway and are going to block the ability of pain to be created through the uh, production of prostanoids. And we're also seeing NSAIDs activating that descending inhibitory pathway, which is reducing the ability to have transmission or ascending tr transmission of pain signals to the brain. When we're looking at our acetaminophen, it's actually blocking the POX2 pathway, which is just lower down in the process and is going to have a similar effect in reducing the production of prostanoids, which will then reduce the amount of nociceptor stimulation that we see.